Hi, I'm Philip from Optimize Lab, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your Google Grants Pro account while avoiding any sort of account suspension that can arise uh, from violating any of the policies set by Google. So what we're looking at here is an example of an account, it's Google Grants account, and this account is making use of roughly the maximum daily spend of just over $1,300 per day, and it's doing it without being at risk of um, violating the policies and going under review or being suspended. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Now, Google Ads gives a number of different policies that grantees have to abide by in order to keep their Google Grants account. And Google also gives a very useful dashboard to show you how well you are meeting these policies and these recommendations. So this is the dashboard here, and you can get your own dashboard by visiting this URL and authorizing the dashboard to connect with your Google Ads account. So you can do that when you're logged in to your Google account and then you go to that URL. And it gives a summary at the top of the dashboard showing you how well you are meeting the different sections um, th uh, that that um, Google wants you to abide by, all of the different recommendations. So on the left here, we've got account policy compliance, and these are the most important rules that you need to abide by, which we're gonna go through in a moment. Then just to the right of that, you've got account best practices. So these are things that Google um, would like you to do in order to get the best possible performance and to ensure that you're getting the most out of the Google grant, the money, uh, the ad spend that Google's giving you. And then first to the right, we've got account quality above average. And this is ensuring that your ads and the landing pages that you're using, the content, the information that you're delivering to people is of the highest quality to make sure people are actually getting the information they need, the information that they're searching for. Um, you've also got a section down here for approved domains. So you'll have an approved domain, you can use that domain um, and you shouldn't be using any other domains. And then here, your website is secure using HTTPS. So that safeguards uh, visitors, it safeguards the people using Google, so that's a plus. So next, I'm going to go through each of the different policies and the recommendations from Google so that you know what you need to do in order to comply with everything that Google sets out in this dashboard. So now we're going to look at the compliance policies. These are the very important rules that Google wants grantees to abide by. So firstly, we've got conversions here and Google wants, uh, where applicable, grantees to be tracking actions that are taking place on their website once visitors have clicked the ad, landed on the website, because Google wants grantees to be making the best use out of the advertising budget that they're using. And the only way they can really do that is if they're tracking what's going on, on their website and making sure that they're targeting people who are finding their content useful and getting in contact with them. So they'll be tracking for things like potentially phone calls or filling out forms or signing up to newsletters, those types of very useful actions. Um, now next here, we've got bidding. And really what Google would like here is for grantees to make uh, use of the smart bidding strategies like target CPA, maximize conversions to ensure that they're getting, again, the most out of their budget. Um, however, you can use manual CPC and it's important that you are aware that there's a $2 bidding cap that you cannot go above uh, and you just want to make sure you're keeping on top of those bids and managing them effectively. Um, but uh, you should be completely fine using manual CPC if that's what you're choosing to do at the moment, but definitely consider moving to one of the smart bidding strategies. Um, next, we've got click-through rate, and Google wants to make sure that people are finding your ads useful, they're engaging with your ads, and for that reason, they set 
a minimum account average click-through rate of 5%. So as long as the average click-through rate for your account is 5% or above, um, then you should be fine and you can review that very, very simply within your account by looking at the summary for all of your campaigns for a given period, for a given month. Um, next, we've got account structure. So Google wants to make sure that grantees are not being um, perhaps a little bit lazy with the setup of their account. Uh, they don't want you to just get all of your keywords and throw them into one ad group. So Google sets a minimum standard. You need to have two ads per ad group and two ad groups per campaign. Now that's a bare minimum. You should be segmenting things according to relevance uh, to a much higher degree than that, but that's the minimum that Google sets. Um, Next, we've got location settings. So Google wants you to set up specific location targeting. So for example, the country that your charity or your nonprofit um, works in uh, and operates in. Um, so what they don't want you to do is just set targeting for all countries. They want you to be specific, not just kind of use the budget for the sake of it. Try and target the people who can uh, get the most benefit from your organization. Um, so the next is ad extensions and here Google sets a minimum of two site links. You need to be using two site link extensions. Now I'd recommend using all of the extensions that you have at your disposal because this gives additional information to your visitors uh, through your ads and it can get you higher click-through rates, it can get you more traffic uh, and more of any actions that you're looking for. So I'd recommend using all of the extensions that are applicable and that you have available to you, but at a bare minimum, you should have two site link extensions. Uh, and then for survey submitted, that's um, simply an annual program survey that Google sends out, it will be sent to the email associated with the login on the account. So that just needs to be done on an annual basis. Um, now it does not have single or generic keywords. Now this is quite crucial because Google doesn't want the grant that you're being given to be wasted on non-relevant keywords that are not um, applicable to the your organization and are not going to be used by people who need your organization or who want to donate or something um, of that nature. So you can, for example, have a single keyword if it is, for example, your organization name, that's fine. Um, and if it's a highly, highly, highly relevant keyword, I've, uh, in my experience, you can use single keywords if it's highly relevant to what, uh, to your organization and what you're doing. Um, but Google does not want generic keywords to be used, keywords that are not relevant. So for example, um, if, um, your charity is related to just, just as an example, um, helping people with lung disease, then using a keyword such as bronchitis, um, or uh, bronchitis symptoms, although that's a, a, a different type of um, ailment, that's absolutely fine uh, because it is relevant to the charity's mission uh, of helping people with those types of lung diseases. However, if you just use the keyword lung or um, lung information, or that might not be relevant enough because you're just talking there about a specific organ that doesn't necessarily relate to disease or the charity's mission statement. Um, so in that case, that might not be relevant enough. And it is very subjective when you're deciding what is relevant. So the, the way to decide, is this keyword that I'm considering relevant? Ask yourself, um, is this something, um, is, is the person who is possibly typing in this keyword, could they be helped by our charity? Um, could we, do we provide information that could help them 
with this specific query that they have. And if the answer is yes, then I would consider using it in your account. If the answer is no, then I would just leave it out of your account because what you want, you, what you don't want to do is target a lot of keywords which have nothing to do with the charity, uh, with your charity. Um, so next we have uh, does not have a quality score of one or two. So Google wants to make sure that your your keywords don't have a low quality score because again, they want their users to have access to the best possible content when they're using Google. Um, so if your ads are not relevant to the keywords that you're targeting and your landing page is not relevant to the keywords that you're targeting, then you, you shouldn't be using them and you might get a low quality score. And if the quality score is one or two, then you need to remove those accounts, uh, those keywords from your account or improve the quality score of those keywords. And just um, quickly on that note, if you have a keyword which has a low quality score of one or two, or even three or four or five, and you want to improve that quality score, then you can look at things like the landing page experience. Is, is that poor? You can see within um, the account columns which keywords have a low quality score because of the landing page experience or the ad relevance or the expected click-through rate. So a rule of thumb there is if you have the keyword within the ad copy, so the exact keyword, or a similar keyword, a phrase similar to it, your, your ad is relevant to that keyword, that'll give you the best chance of having high ad relevance. Then if you also select a landing page or edit your landing page so that it is also relevant to that keyword, so the keyword could be contained on the landing page and there's content on that page which is relevant to that keyword. Using the same example, if somebody typed in uh, bronchitis or bronchitis symptoms and the ad is discussing and talking about bronchitis symptoms, uh, saying get more information about the symptoms here and then the landing page has information about those symptoms, you're more likely to get a high quality score. So it's just making sure that you're ticking all those boxes um, and in order to make sure that you're abiding by this particular policy, you can set up an automated rule within your Google Ads account to automatically check for when a keyword's quality score drops down to a one or a two and you can set up this automated rule to send you an alert to send you an email um, and alert you to the fact that you need to take action at the same time you can set up another automated rule to automatically pause those keywords so they won't put you at risk of your account going under suspension and then those keywords can remain paused until you have made the adjustments that you need to make in order to improve that quality score. So next I'm going to talk about the best practices. So now we're going to look at the best practices that are recommended by Google and it's important to note here that you don't have to use all of the best practices, you only need to use the ones that are applicable to your particular account, but it's useful to consider them and use as many of the best practices as you can within your account because ultimately they will help to improve the overall performance that you see. Um, so if we start here with conversions, uh, again, you want to be tracking um, something meaningful that's going to occur on your website, some kind of action that visitors are going to carry out, whether it's a phone call or filling out a form on your website, getting in contact with you or subscribing to a newsletter of some kind or downloading something, whatever's meaningful for your objectives, you want to be tracking that. And if you're tracking different conversions, then it can also be useful to track a different value for each of those conversions, especially if you're, for example, taking donations, you could track the value of that donation and that's useful data to import back into Google Ads. So that's something that Google recommends that you do. Um, also related to the conversion tracking is the attribution model. So previously, the only attribution model available was last click attribution, uh, and that was the prominent um, sort of attribution model that was used. Um, there are options now to consider such as data driven or time decay. So it's good to consider using another 
potentially more useful attribution model and setting that up within your account. Um, now, again, going back to bidding, which we discussed earlier, Google wants you to be using one of the automated bidding strategies for your campaigns to get the best possible performance. So target CPA or maximize conversions or target ROAS, using one of these strategies can help your, uh, your account generate more conversions and get more meaningful actions being carried out on your website. So that's useful to also use. Um, has enough keywords per account so again google doesn't want grantees to be somewhat lazy with the accounts they set up and just add a few keywords and then target those keywords you should have a comprehensive list of keywords that are related to your non-profit organization that can help you get um the visitors that you need and help you get in touch with people who can benefit from your organization or donate to your organization. Um, now added to that, you can also add negative keywords to, so to help improve the relevance and to help make sure that that grant that you've been given is being used effectively, you can block particular words from being targeted by your ads so this will be a case of going through your search term report and picking out anything that's not relevant and adding it as a negative keyword now you can add also you can preemptively add negative keywords and you can add in negative keywords into your campaign in, 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 in list format into your account and apply it to all of the different campaigns that that negative keyword list will be applicable to. That's something I highly recommend. Um, and um, that that's something that Google really needs or would like people to do. So you should have negative keywords within, um, within your account. Um, and there are some other um, conversion based um, best practices here has a good cost per action or CPA. Um, and what Google really wants there is to make sure that you're not paying an exorbitant amount. This is somewhat subjective for your conversions uh, and make sure that there's a sensible amount there. So that the budget, the Google grant isn't just being uh, potentially wasted. Um, and an extended attribution window. So the length of time within which a person's action can be counted as a conversion, making sure that that's set up correctly is important to do. So if you check within this dashboard, or even if you're just keeping on top of these things within your account, then you can make the best use of the Google grant that you have available to you and not be at risk of having your account suspended. And using this dashboard is particularly useful because it allows you to keep on top of things and realize um, if you are lacking in a certain area, um, especially with those compliance policies, and then you can take action. And if you do take action, if you do spot those things and take action, then your account will not go under review and it will not be suspended. So I hope this video has been useful and informative and will help you to keep your account online and make the best use of your grant. Um, if you'd uh, like any assistance with making any of those changes and managing your Google Grants account, then feel free to get in contact with us at contact at Optimize Lab dot com and we'd be happy to hear from you and uh, speak with you on how we can assist you managing your account um, and thank you for watching